Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to give you tips on how to improve your Japanese handwriting. This is a point that I think all of us Japanese learners have struggled with, especially in the beginning when you're learning all of these new symbols and you don't really know or understand how to make them look nice. Now there is a debate to be had about the importance of even learning to handwrite Japanese since everyone uses screens nowadays. I personally agree that it isn't the most useful skill, but if like me you just like writing things out in Japanese because of its beautiful syllabary, or if like me you find it easier to remember things when you write them down on a piece of paper, you probably still want to know how to write in Japanese nicely regardless of its importance. I mean you're watching a video about it right now. I also want to preface this video by saying that my handwriting is by no means super pretty or perfect or anything like that, but it has improved a lot from when I was a beginner by following the tips I'm going to give you, and I hope they can help you too. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, if you find them helpful too. I'm assuming that you have at least a basic understanding of the Japanese writing system, the two syllabaries hiragana and katakana, and kanji. The same tips apply to all of them, and you find that once you improve at one of them, you improve at all of them because you understand the basic concepts for good handwriting. I personally only really tried to improve my handwriting when I started to learn kanji, because my kanji would be all squashed and ugly and it was hard to read, even for me. But when I got better at writing kanji, I also got better at writing hiragana and katakana. All of the hiragana, katakana and kanji have a specific stroke order. This is the way that you're supposed to write each line of the characters. This is usually invariable. You should learn this stroke order and actively use it when you write. If you've already learned hiragana and katakana incorrectly, I would recommend going back and reviewing them to see which ones you're spelling properly. If you've learned kanji, this can become a bit tedious and time consuming, so I'd recommend you just learn the stroke order for every kanji you learn from now on. Luckily, because of radicals, if you learn how to correctly write one character, you can use that knowledge to help you figure out the stroke order of other kanji with the same radicals. There are tons of resources online to help you learn stroke order. Just search hiragana stroke order or katakana stroke order to get diagrams that you can print or look at. If you use an online dictionary, they almost always have a kanji database that displays the stroke order for the kanji. This doesn't have to be anything special, I just took this from an old maths book. You can also print them from online if you want some proper Japanese writing grids and can't buy an actual book. The boxes are too small here, so I grouped them into 16 for the big boxes and 4 for the small ones. The good paper is used to help you learn spacing. All Japanese characters have a balance and can be written on a square. It's important to know how to space out your characters properly on the square to write them correctly. Use a reference such as a kanji book or an online dictionary and pay close attention to how the character is spread out and try to imitate it in your writing. These are specifically designed to help Japanese children or Japanese learners learn kanji, but they teach you how to write the characters the right way. They have boxes with grids in them to help with spacing, and they teach stroke order too. Kanji worksheets can be found fairly easy on the internet, and then printed up for use. I can't remember the site I found the ones that I used, but a quick Google search for kanji worksheets should yield some good results. This should be fairly obvious, but if you want to improve at anything, you have to practice and practice often. This is where workbooks and worksheets come in, because they usually have a lot of space for you to just repeat the character over and over again. But even when you don't have that, get some good paper, or even regular line paper, and write down the characters again and again. At first you'll have to actively try and improve with every character you write, but soon, writing things the right way will just feel natural, and you'll feel... and you'll see your handwriting improve. This can seem tedious, because it can be, but if you enjoy writing and are seriously committed to improving your handwriting, I'm sure you can spare 15 minutes a day to sit down and write down some of your characters. It can be done at the beginning of a study session or first thing in the morning. It doesn't even have to be just writing the same character over and over. You can also be writing journal entries or notes from a textbook, but just paying attention to the way you're writing each character. with the way that a lot of Japanese learners write is that the characters look squashed or they end up going under the line. This is a problem of spacing that needs to be improved by using a grid, but it can be made worse by using a large nib pen. 
Kanji have a lot of lines and they tend to merge together when you're writing with a big pen on a small line. This is the reason why a lot of Japanese brands go down to very small nib sizes like 0.1. It's obviously much easier to get clear characters and it makes your handwriting much smaller and neater. I personally would recommend anything 0.5 and under, but obviously this depends on how big the lines or boxes you're trying to write in are. I use this Uniball Eye micro pen which just says fine on it, but I would estimate it's about 0.4 size. I use this Pilot Friction Ball Pen in 0.5, this Pilot G2 Pen in 0.5, and Pelican Fine Liners, and Pelican Fine Liners, which are all 0.4. You'll notice a very big difference in your ability to write well just by changing your pen. I'm sure most of you already have a go-to pen for note taking because it makes your handwriting look neater, or you write better with it. The same concept applies here. On the subject of pens, I'd also recommend using an ink or gel pen over a ballpoint pen. A lot of ballpoint pens tend to give inconsistent lines and they also usually have very large nib sizes. I know you're here watching my video about this, but I'm not the complete authority on Japanese handwriting and there's so many people out there who also have great insights about this topic. Just like with anything else you're trying to research, it can, it can be helpful to get information from a variety of sources. And thanks to the almighty internet, there's, there's so much information out there about everything. Just search on YouTube how to improve your Japanese handwriting, how I'm assuming you found this video, and you'll see so many videos about this very topic that you can use to provide more guidance, or maybe elaborate on a point I may have missed, or just explain the concept better. Okay, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you find it useful, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.